Okay, super quick here. Uh, this is the Golang Playground, and I'm just going to take the code that's in the lab guide and pick it up and drop it in here and then show you what it does when we run it. And then I'm going to make the modifications that are suggested in the guide. So down here we see the Fibonacci numbers. And then if we replace the main function as suggested, we can run it again and see that we get the sequence twice. And then if I do the third iteration of this source code like that, then you'll see that we get the first 10 again. Now this is a very simple example of functional programming in Golang. The important thing here is that you understand the flow and how the functions are interacting with each other to get these results. Okay, so let's try the next example. Let's, uh, let's clear out some of this stuff. All right, there's going to be a struct called a rectangle. And there's going to be a function that expects to receive a rectangle and returns the area. And then in main, we are going to have a rectangle called R1. It's going to be 2 by 3. And we're going to print the area. Let's see what we get. Great. Okay, let's try another example. Pop that in. Okay, so here we're defining a new type called my number, which is going to be an integer. And then we are defining a method called abs, which will be a property of my number. So down here we set a my number to 2 and call it f. And then we ask for f abs. Let's see what happens. Great. Let's have a quick look at pointers. I'm going to start with the first example given. Looks like that. And we'll just take this for a run and see what happened. OK, 0, 0. So what's going on here? Uh, we have a variable called i, which is set to 0. And then we print it. So we get 0. No big surprise there. Then we increase i. An increase i receives something called i, which is an integer, and increases it by 1. And then we print it, and we get 0 again. So what this is showing is that this i inside the code block for the increase function is on a different scope, and we haven't actually changed i outside of the function. Go gives us a way to use pointers so that the function can actually influence the values of variables declared outside of itself. And the way we do that is with pointers. Okay, so instead of receiving a value for i, we'll say the function receives a pointer to i. And then we'll say star i here and here. And that will tell it to go look up the value referred to by that pointer. And then we'll go down here and say, don't pass in the value of i, pass in the pointer to i instead. So let's give that a try. Sure enough, i increased. Great. We can also use pointers like this. See what we did there? We made a rectangle r, which is 3 by 4. Printed it. Three, four, great. Then we called our double function, which is a method of rectangle defined up here. Double it takes a pointer to a rectangle. And then we doubled the a and the b dimensions with times equals two. And then down here, six, 